You received funding requests for operating the capital outlay of $83,120,000 and some change. That's $8.5 million more than your current fiscal year budget for an 11% increase. That, in my time, I believe is unprecedented in its magnitude. The budget that you're about to introduce, hopefully, requests an increase of 5.38%. I think great effort was taken by you in its development trying to strike a balance between the real needs of this community and also being cognizant of the fact that we are maintaining two of the lowest tax rates in the state. And one of those is the county property tax rate. It is the lowest in the state of Maryland. It's proposed to be 0.536. And the other one is the second lowest being the income tax in the entire state, proposed to be 2.40. In terms of priorities, up there top, front and center, is public safety and health. I think that's reflective of your focus, but also that of the newly elected chair, who is very concerned about um, the drug situation in particular, as well as crime. And I think you as the council have stepped up in this budget to fully support that effort. It's also focused on infrastructure, our roads in particular, and public school education, maintenance, veteran and infrastructure needs. You look for ways to try to develop partnerships so we can basically make use of other people's money. We've done that successfully. We're continuing with the state of Maryland about their statewide radio communication system. We're working with private foundations, organizations, and the public about donations, such as to the community center. And we're also building coalitions and partnerships to leverage millions of dollars in grants to support innovative environmental projects and alternative energy solutions. Again, because this is a budget focused on public safety, the top highlight is the addition of seven full-time positions in the public safety sector. That's two in the sheriff's department as deputies, two in the correctional facility as officers, two EMT positions, and an additional 911 dispatch operator. You have also fully funded the volunteer fire department, including a $30,000 amount for retention and recruitment. You've transferred $1 million to what's called OPEP, Other Post Employment, Employment's Benefits Trust. You have continued funding for county roads maintenance. We're looking at approximately 43 miles to be resurfaced. And you're continuing funding for major capital projects. You have included in this a step increase for county employees effective January 1st, as opposed to July 1st in an effort to save money. Talbot County Public Schools is being funded at the required maintenance of level maintenance of effort level. It's an increase of over $582,000 from this fiscal year. In addition, you're funding $150,000 of a pension increase for the school employees, and you've approved and included an additional $60,000 for programs that are not including the maintenance of effort. So in all, county funds provide for over 74% of the public school's base operating budget, as well as an additional $3 million in debt service. The economy is starting to see an uptick in terms of what's coming in for us. Property taxes are up. Income tax is even more so in terms of percentages. If you look at the bottom line, just so we understand prior year's fund balance, we'll talk about that more in a minute, but that's a $1.29 um, million dollar figure. That million dollars of that is for OPEP, and then the $290,000 is being used by this council to balance this budget. Under expenditures, same type of chart. Now you've seen a tremendous spike in public safety of 18%. Part of that is because of additional hirings and capital outlay, but it's also because of that shift in employment benefits into that line item. Uh, we're seeing an increase in library. We're putting a substantial amount into capital outlays for some needs that they have there as well. So again, not going through each line item, but to just show where those expenditures are focused. Fund balance, again, we won't agonized by going through every line, but just to give you an idea of what we have in basically our savings account, if you go down to FY 2015 projected surplus, a little more than halfway down, you're going to see we are anticipating $3 million in this budget, more than what we had um, budgeted. That will bring your discretionary balance as of June 30th of this year to list over just over $12 million. When we take that million out for the OPEB transfer and then a little under 0.3 million to balance the budget, you have 11 million remaining balance going forward. Uh, capital Projects Fund, we've captured some of the big ones. The largest, again, Public Safety, the Operations Center, 911 is expanding. That's $2.5 million right there. Waterways and Wharves, you're putting 50,000 in for public landings maintenance, 100,000 for the Tunis Mills Bridge Landing. 
highways and streets, your infrastructure, major project in Wells Burnett Airport Road, culvert replacement, and a water quality improvement project of about $100,000 that your county engineer has requested to do on waterway improvement projects. Yeah. Capital projects for public schools, you're again funding one-to-one -one laptops at an amount of $200,000. Button school roof needs to be replaced, a portion of, of almost half a million. White Marsh needs portable classrooms due to growth in their population of a little over 115,000. And the Moton School feasibility study is needed prior to renovation of that uh, facility, of that building, so it's a little over 80,000. So capital projects are totaling $4.3 million.